So as many of you guys know, corns go through what is called an ontogenetic color change, which just means over time, from baby to adult, they actually change colors. So you may have an animal that starts off white that turns out orange, and we'll show you that later. But here is our male Grapico, and actually he is a Coral Ghost Tesser Stripe, and Ghost in particular doesn't change an awful lot, unless you're working with some of the Coral Ghost stuff, which will get progressively more and more pink over time. Just a regular ghost starts gray and pretty much ends gray, but it's still an amazing animal and I love how unique, you know, a gray snake like this can be and this light pink stripe down the back is just icing on the cake. So we're gonna show you some awesome corn snakes and some awesome ontogenetic color changes and you get to learn big words and <laughs> sound like you're smart. So a lot of you guys know who this guy is. This is the brain. This is our snow tessera. And as you guys know, the brain actually bred last year. So we actually have some of the brain's babies. But before we see that, the ghost tessera, if you saw, had this yellow going down the neck here. And that is actually something that happens in most morphs of corn snakes or just corn snakes in general. So that yellow under the neck is actually part of the corn snakes ontogenetic color change. And you'll see even normal ones in the wild, they may start out with no coloration under the neck and then they are beautiful red adults with yellow necks. As you can see, it's super dramatic on the brain here. And look, this is his baby right here. And as you can see, I don't see any yellow on her. And quite frankly, this animal is almost like translucent and a beautiful pink coloration. So this here will grow up to be something pretty similar to the brain here. This one may be a little bit more pink as an adult and it may gain a little bit more pink into maturity, but not an awful lot. And it will look a lot like this, but with a yellow neck, much like the brain. And now let's see our next corn snake, which is going to be the sulfur. So like I said before, sulfur, is a morph combination that actually changes a lot from baby to adulthood. And sulfur is an amyl diffused caramel. So it makes for these really awesome orange animals. And as you can see, they start off predominantly orange and white. And then you can see there's these wings right here, which is actually from what we believe to be the mask gene, which is a completely, a whole different story on its own. And I'll have to make a whole video on it. But I have, the yearling version of this animal, the sulfur mass. And as you can see, it is gaining a lot of orange coloration. All that white and really subtle yellow, which is on the baby, has turned into this really bright yellow and this really burnt orange coloration. Really beautiful animal. And I really think that this is a snake that stands out and has a really, really unique coloration to it. But there's a few other awesome quirks about these sulfurs that I wanna show you. So you know I was just talking about that wing pattern on the head there and the mass gene. Well, what happens when you don't have the mass gene in it? This is a sulfur actually with a bald head. This is going to our friend Amanda. Look at how beautiful that snake is with its bald head right there. She is really lucky and I can't wait to see what this one looks like when it grows up because the diffuse gene, just like its name, means that it actually diffuses the pattern or washes out some of the pattern on the side there and makes for a really interesting animal. So here we have Minute Maid, the amazing amyl caramel diffuse or sulfur corn snake. So some people prefer the contrast of the orange and the white, but I love when they mature into that beautiful orange yellow coloration. I think it's just so unique to this gene and something that you don't really see in snakes a lot. But just like other animals with the amelanistic gene, this girl has amazing red eyes as well as this coloration that is brighter towards her head and then kind of gets to a duller yellow coloration as you go down. And then you can see the belly kind of does the opposite. The belly starts off white and then goes into this beautiful yellow coloration, which I think is part of the amazing allure of this morph combination. Also, it's the influence of that diffuse gene. So we can see it in the fires 
we have a red belly. So it'll start off white at the top and then we'll get a red belly down there because a fire is just an amyl diffused and a sulfur is an amyl diffused caramel. Figured why not break it up with a gene that does not change much. So this is the amelanistic gene or lacking in melanin. And what is melanin? That's black pigment in the skin and therefore these animals are this amazing orange and red coloration, but they do not change that much. So you can see this right here is an amel test for a baby, and this is a hatchling, and this here is our yearling holdback. And as you can see, both beautiful animals, but you can pretty much tell what to expect with these guys. What they start off with as babies will only get, you know, in some cases more beautiful, like some of your reverse Okatees will get a lot more red with age. But I see your normal Amels, they may get a little bit more saturated with age, but overall they look pretty similar. Both of these animals probably have other stuff going on. This is from our Amel buff to our Sunglow Tessera, but let's get our Sunglow Tessera out. Here it is, our beautiful mother Capri, or Capri Sun for full. Is that a thing? Can you? No. For full? Do that one more time. Start over. <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> so like, and No, like where you showed the body, where you were tipping this part down. And yeah. here we are, our adult female. She has had two clutches for us, our Amel Tessera girl. As you can see, she's a lot more red, and that's a result of the fact that the father was actually had some different lineage in him, and therefore, these, oh, they're getting all territorial. The male is actually nudging against the female. So they're actually nudging against each other, trying to assert their dominance. So this is actually why you don't house corn snakes together, because they will have these little bouts of aggression towards each other. Not physical aggression, you know, they won't get hurt from this, but it definitely attributes to some stress in the animals. So this is why I always say, don't keep them together, because as you can see, this guy's just acting all kinds of twitchy since since uh, they started doing that. And it's funny because the baby and this one had no problem being with each other, but it seems that because this female's breeding size, maybe that is, you know. Some pheromones yeah, being released. something <laughs> in this animal. And, they aren't exactly loving each other's presence. So I'm gonna put one of them down. This is a super simple gene, the oldest gene that we had. Dr. Bechtel proved out uh, this gene in the 80s and it was what kind of started the whole morph craze in reptiles. So it's an awesome gene. It is a classic corn snake gene, an amazing first pet. Most people's first pet seems to be an amel. I was about to snake. ask, do you think it's the most common morph in corn snakes today? 100%, and I think there's good reason for it because they're beautiful animals. It's a single recessive gene, so it's easy to make. And also you can put it to annery and then get the double het, so you have your het snows, and then snows are your beautiful white animals. That we showed earlier in this episode. Not episode, video. You can see she's winging around pheromones there with her tail. Yeah, so something's happening between these two. Girl, it's not February yet. I know. It's not We're time. Just about to go into you brumation. haven't gone in brumation yet. Chill out that tail. Don't do it in my face here. Okay, let's put them away. <laughs> so for the last animal, I had to show you guys something unique. And we just started talking about this animal recently on our Instagram. Otherwise, I've kind of kept it a little bit of a secret because I wasn't sure what was really going on with this. So this here is an Anery Tessera. But what's unique about this Anery Tessera is that she's so dark. So most of the times, Anery Tessera start off a beautiful black and gray coloration, and then they mature into this more of a purple animal, you know, more of a muted animal over time. But this girl actually stayed black. I gotta, I gotta show you guys the other adult Anery Tessera <laughs> just to show you how different they are from each other. But like I said, I had to show you the contrast between this Anery Tessera, whose name is Angelica, and this Anery Tessera, which is actually Cynthia, which that's a Rugrats reference, right? Yes. That's the doll and then Angelica is the girl. As you can see with age, this one got a light, almost, you know, at times a purplish coloration there and just a light gray. And then this one, actually, she went through a couple phases. So she started out kind of a purplish coloration. One of the things to note is the space between the neck there has always been kind of blushed out and faded out. And she 
but I just thought it was such an interesting, unique animal. I'm not saying anything's proven or going on here, but it's just fun to experiment with different lines of animals. So, you know, having animals pop out and breeding the darkest animal to the darkest animal to get polygenic line bred traits. And I would love to see a black corn snake one day. And I think this is one of the steps towards that. Here we have Cynthia and Angelica's baby. So this here is from Cynthia, our dark Tessera female. As you can see, it's a little bit of a purplish coloration, but overall a lot more contrasty than say this baby right here from that light mother. So it will be interesting to see how these grow up. I suspect this one looked like the mother. I hope this one looks like the mother, but we will see. But it looks like a really clean animal with some really great stripes, you know, just like the mom has. So. I'm really excited to see how these grow up. I also have these in Ghost, so I wanna see if we can produce a really crazy dark ghost animal. And so I'm really excited to see where this goes in the future. This is something that's just beginning here at Port City Pythons and I'm excited about. I have some of the light coloration babies up for sale, but I have to keep back all of the dark babies just to see how they will turn out. And that is just, to make sure that I know what I'm selling to people and so that I know for sure what's gonna happen to these babies as they get old. That is the one thing about corn snakes, you know, just like something like a green tree python, you know, the babies start off different colorations so you don't know exactly how they will mature and what they will look like as they get older. So sometimes you can make some mistakes as far as holding your babies back. So you'll sell an animal that ends up looking better as an adult than the animal that you held back. And that's just part of the fun of it. And that's part of being a breeder is actually being able to hold back all of your animals to see what you get so that you can produce the best animals year after year. And what are you doing if you are not making better animals every single year? You should be pushing your projects forward. You should be making more beautiful animals. You should be just trying to push the boundaries a little bit. So part of what makes this exciting as far as making animals dark is that I will have a tool in the future. So what's gonna happen when I pair that dark animal with a light animal and I make snows out of this? Will it look different than a snow from this girl? Because they're both had snow, so we'll see what happens. Maybe this snow comes out a lot more white. Maybe it comes out a lot more pink. Maybe this one comes out more white, more pink, so you don't know, and that's part of the fun of breeding. And I look forward to figuring out what's going on in these guys. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and if you made it this far, you're, you're on the most team. Certainly oh. on the team. <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> you, I didn't know you were gonna try to join. I, well, I couldn't tell you, so I just had to do it. You're on the team. You're on the team.